Okay, my friends, we are going to be talking about color blending with analogous colors. Um, before we begin, we're going to make a zebra outline. This is supposed to kind of look like a zebra face. You're going to start by doing in the middle of your paper a curve like this. And then another curve that goes under it. You're going to do a circle inside of there. Another circle. A circle down at the bottom here, at this curve in the middle. And then a circle in the middle here. These little circles are basically highlights. So what I'm gonna do right now, like in this picture here, I'm gonna color in with black around that circle. Fill it in. Perfect. Okay, I'm now gonna do just like a lid on this, so curve above this. And I'm gonna do some wavy lines uh, that come from the end of the paper. So I'm gonna start by doing a wavy line like this. And then I want it to get thicker towards the end, uh, or the edge of the paper, and then thinner towards the bottom. So I can do it two ways. I can start at the, at the tip here, get kind of close to that first line, but then get farther away as I get farther from the paper, or farther to the edge. So that's one way to do it. Or you can do it the opposite way. You can start from the edge, come out far away, and then wave your way closer to that first line. So you do what works for you. You're gonna do about one, two, three, four, five to six of these. They can be different lengths. But one key thing you wanna make sure that you are doing when you're making these is that you are not um, making them too thin um, because we're gonna be coloring inside them. Okay, so that's looking good. I have that. Now I'm gonna do the color blending part. Analogous colors are neighbors that are next to one another on the color wheel. So when I'm looking at the color wheel, um, each color has two color neighbors. For example, if I just picked red, I don't know, I'm feeling like red, um, there's going to be two neighbors to red, orange or violet. Those are called red's analogous colors. It's a color scheme in art. So we're gonna be using that color scheme because it's really great when you're trying to um, mix colors or blend colors together. It's my favorite color scheme to use. Um, and then I always make sure that I have this color tool in front of me or somewhere in the room to look at so I can reference where things are on the color wheel. So don't forget to use that tool as we're working. I'm gonna start with whatever color I want. Okay, really doesn't matter for the first color. And I'm gonna fill in half of the line space I made with that first color. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna fill about half with the orange. All right, if you chose a different color, that's perfectly fine. All right, so I got my orange in here. Now I'm gonna look on the color wheel what's next to orange, red, or yellow. Those are the orange analogous colors. If you picked a different color, then your analogous colors are gonna be different. If your first color was not orange, you probably have other um, two colors next to that color. So mine was orange, so I'm gonna pick one of those two. Not both, just one. It doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna see, hmm, what do I have right here? I'm gonna pick yellow. Okay, so now the other half is gonna be done with yellow in that, in that line there. And now the trick is I would like you to have the two colors blend in the middle. So in order to have blending happen, you have to have the two colors touch. So I'm gonna have to take a little bit of that second color and go inside and over that first color a little bit. So see in the middle, the two blended together and now I've got a new color, yellow orange. Perfect. So I'm gonna do another one, friends, so you can kind of get an idea how it works. All right, maybe this time I'm gonna use purple. I'm gonna go in, notice how I'm working with the line, with the shape, not against it. That's easier, personally, I think. Um, but you can certainly, if you're comfortable, go in different directions and, you know, Make your coloring skills really good. 
All right, so I went in with that purple. Get that color wheel out. What's next to purple? Red or blue. Which one do I want to use? That's my decision. Um, let's see, what do I have here in my bag? I think I'm going to try out the blue. Sometimes you might have different shades of blue. Um, that's okay. Just pick as long as it's a blue, it'll work. So I'm going to go in, fill the other half in. And then I have one more step. What do I have to do? What did I not do yet? That's right, I've got to go a little bit into my first color with my second color. Now I've got blue violet in the middle. Isn't that awesome? So I'm going to go in. Um, I'm going to show you a different way if you're comfortable with this. Okay. Let's see. I am going to use red. And by the way, pink, if you want to use pink, I just count that as red. Pink is really just a tint of red. Um, I always have friends ask, what if I go half this way? Maybe I fill the line in halfway this way with my red instead of doing it in the other direction. Okay, let's see how it looks. What's next to red? Purple or orange? Um, let's see, what do I have right here? Purple, I'm gonna do purple. I'm gonna go in now with that purple and the other half. Okay, but now I gotta have some areas where the two blend, 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 mixed together. So I'm gonna go a little bit into that red. That first color, oh my gosh, that looks awesome, friends. Okay, so you're gonna keep going until each section here has a different analogous color blend. Um, don't color the white areas of your zebra. I'm gonna show you what to do with that next. In your eye, you can also do an analogous color blend. You would just fill half of that shape with one color and then find it's analogous and do the other half in there. So I'm gonna finish this and then I'll show you the last I'm almost step. finished up here. Just wanted to show you the eye. So I went in, this is actually a yellow green. So sometimes I have to check them. So this actually has a little bit of green mixed into it. Or so um, sometimes that'll happen. So I'm gonna just count it. It really doesn't matter. You can either count it as a yellow or a green because it does have a lot of yellow in it. I'm just gonna count it as a green um, and I'm gonna put a little blue in it since it already has some yellow. And you're gonna go in and half of it, we're gonna have blend in that middle there where they come together. All right, so there is my eye. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get either a gray or if you don't have a gray, you can use um, a black, just use it very lightly. And we're just gonna add a little shading in the eye and then also some textured hairs. So I'm just gonna go in the corners here and just very lightly push a little gray down and then a little gray on my lid to create a shadow. So now that I have that, I'm gonna go in just tiny little lines because it's, you gotta think, this is not like the mane of a lion. Okay, if we're drawing the mane of a lion or you know a dog with a long hair, you'd wanna make your lines really long. But on a zebra, the hairs are so short on a zebra. So to add that texture, you wanna draw really, really light, small lines. So I'm gonna go in different directions. I'm pushing really light with my gray crayon and um, I'm just gonna add some really short little hairs. And I'm gonna repeat that all around the whole thing until I get about the whole white area, just covered a little bit. Don't overdo it, because obviously we know that zebras usually look white. Um, they don't look gray, so we don't wanna overdo it. 